I was going to say, we're going to be mailing uh, Stephen a prize. Um, Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, guys. Uh, but it's like a golden we're gonna be, bomb. We're going to be mailing like... you a small hamster. Um, <laughs> bomb. Bomb. <laughs> That's our song. Thank you, Stephen. Welcome back. The long-awaited, cinematographically speaking, uh, podcast. Uh, we got pretty much everyone here today. Uh, we're missing out on special guest Tony, but that's why he's a special guest. And, Thank you, Stephen. Uh, I already think Stephen. Oh, my bad. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, all right, I'll take we'll, two. We'll cut that up. Anyway, no, no, no. You keep thanking, thanking, we're thanking everything. Stephen for not for special guest Tony. Yeah, Stephen laughed at my not joke, being, and that's why he's being yes. thanked. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, today we're talking about the Night of the Hunter. Time to do a quick Google. Directed by. <laughs> Directed by. This poor guy, honestly, I feel so bad for him. Charles Lawton, nineteen fifty-five. I've I've heard it said. I've heard the the GH said like Lafton, Lofton, Lafton, Lofton. Hold on, La- hold on, Lofton. hold on. You're not a you're not a real American if you can't pronounce his name. Hold on, it is. Everyone say it at the same time. It's Laughlin. Hold on, the American. It's Just a classic surname. I don't know. It's Honganini. Everyone else is saying it's a uh, lot. Oh my god, let's move on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing a lot. Anyway, who cares? That's probably fake. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is probably fake. It was computer generated. Anyway, so, uh, anyway, yeah, 1955, The Night of the Hunter. You know, oh my gosh, this movie. Ah, it's on every list. It was uh, the professor's favorite film. If you recall correctly, that professor we had. <laughs> the professor. Oh, I didn't. Professor. I forgot about that. <laughs> what yeah, was his so name? Professor Emeritus. David, right? Professor Emeritus David. Yeah, David Caldwell. David Caldwell. Yeah, Professor Emeritus. Professor David Caldwell. Emeritus David Caldwell. <laughs> professor Emeritus Hell David yeah. Caldwell. This is, I guess, his favorite film. If you recall that conversation correctly. Anyway, thanks again to him for yeah, coming. Thanks on. Again. Yeah, thanks again. And um, anyway, so we're here to <laughs> talk about this movie. We have some first thoughts. <laughs> Wait, did you did you have a big announcement that you wanted to say? Uh, I do have a big announcement, but okay, I'm gonna save it, gonna, it for the it, end. Okay. So does it have to do with merch? Yeah, that means you have to. Wait, watch wait, the wait, wait! Don't no, talk through. about the merch. So okay, okay. No, yeah. this isn't the merch announcement. So all the fans out there, merch drop. All the fans out there, especially. Uh. Anyway. What? <laughs> well, well, I just want. Are you gonna demographically? Well, we love India and Pakistan right, right. and Bangladesh. Of course. Yeah. Of course. But also, uh, you know, if your name is Raul Benavides and you want to hear the big <laughs> announcement, I guess you'll have to watch the whole episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks, Raul. Thanks, Raul. And Rajin Dahar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Troy, you're first on today's docket. Okay. About All right. First thoughts. thoughts. All right. Look, this movie's cool. I like the movie. All in all, I'll say it didn't really excite me. I'm not excited about it. I didn't find it like particularly interesting, but I did think it was really, really good. Lots of it just felt um, almost like too classic. Like, like, uh, like everything is like kind of classic archetypes, like the father, the son, the other stuff, the good, the evil you know, lighting techniques that might have been... Oh my gosh, shut the hell up, Elsmore. You're, like, playing with coins. <laughs> anyway, all these, like, lighting techniques, you know, and it's all... The noir is cool, but... Uh, the light, it looks way... Be- I think it looks better than the story is or something, but... um. Anyway, so that's sort of my thing. I, I liked it a lot, but it didn't really excite me or particularly interest me. 
And I bet it like sucked the cocks off of everyone who saw it at the time. Although, spoiler alert, it was really poorly received at the time. And that's why the guy never made another film. Poor guy. And banned. And banned. Banned, yeah. In several locations. Yeah, got the church terrible and all from stuff. the church, yeah. And, and the Legion of Decency. Yeah. Well, the Legion of Decency had a, liked the it. The Legion of Decency. Did not. No, no, no. They did oh, like, not. Because it disparaged no, marriage. Not. Yeah, and religion. They said it was like abhorrent, like. Yeah. It's like a sin against religion. Ah, yeah, and this guy died before, you know, this became known as the like, greatest really? film of all time. Yeah, he died in '66. You, you, you know, you know, he. Sorry, not to cut off John's opening thoughts. Just, just to say, I, I'm pretty sure that the director is a very famous actor, and this is the only movie he directed. But he's like, yeah, he's everyone knew him for yeah. his acting credits. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's all. Anyway, so that's it for me. I, I really liked it, but didn't find it really super interesting or or like exciting enough. I guess. But I did really like it. Um, I liked it a ton. I thought the yeah, I know what you're saying with like the it being like super classic Hollywood in many regards. Especially with, there's like some dialogue that is feels that way that feels like it, it like maybe uh, kept me at arm's length or something for a second or two because of that. But that being said, um. There are a lot of, I mean, we'll get into more particular later, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of sequences in it that I thought were like a one that were like super, super good. They kind of like caught me off guard and yeah, overall, I mean, I don't know. I thought, I thought it was like a super, it was really strong, like story and like characters, especially the, the dude, you know, the preacher, I don't remember, I forget his name, but, um, pa- pa- Powell, Mr. Powell, Powell? Yeah. Was Powell? yeah, 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 Mr. Powell, and he, yeah, but the whole thing feels like very, uh, there's like a kind of fairy tale, like, uh, or like folk tale, like quality to the whole thing, which I thought was very, and I think that like the sequences that I like the most kind of really like, uh, gave like a, like a big feeling like American like backdrop or something to the whole thing that made it that made it feel super super cool so yeah very American yeah yeah I agree I think this is cinematic Americana no but uh but uh (laughs) I think also so the movie was good I really liked it uh I understand what Troy means when he says that like uh didn't like excite you I think some of the suspense moments are like lost with time. Like not to say it wasn't like I could admire it and I could understand how it would be suspenseful at the time, but like I'm watching it more like I'm at a museum and not in like a negative way. Like I'm kind of immersed, you know, the ending though, the last third. Wow. I was, I was emotionally invested. God, I was so invested for that last arc um, to the point where like I just after the movie finished I was just thinking about the old lady and I was like kind of tearing up like at the her like uh archetypal representation you know the meta quality but also the um I really did enjoy the ambivalent nature or ambivalent stance it has towards religion because clearly there's so many cases which is bad but ultimately one of the best figures in the movie is also religious like she's like the most religious to some degree. Um, and I think contextually, that's really important. Like, I understand why this goes down in history, because making this in 1955 was probably really intense, really cool. Um, yeah, I really liked the movie. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I'd describe this, I was like charmed by the film, you know? I was like, oh, this is like a cute little piece I think if I watched this maybe like five years ago or something like this, I would have been way more hyped on it back in my like 50s movies days. Um, But now that I am officially a Bergmanite, um, I am not quite as like enthralled by it. There was lots of great little scenes. Um, uh, But aside from that, I don't, like, I kind of, like, so I actually thought that, like, this is something that Troy really liked, 
or something like this. And I thought Troy had seen this before and was like a big wreck of his. And the whole time I was just thinking, like, because I know Troy doesn't really like 12 Angry Men very much. So I was like, is it wrong? Maybe ever. Yeah. So, I was, and I just kept thinking, like, why does Troy like this more than 12 Angry Men? Like, to me, this is like, uh, I don't know. I think it's better, but I I thought that Troy liked this movie a lot, but that was my bad. Well, yeah, I think. But we're yeah. So, sorry. No, that, that that's pretty much it. I found it yeah. charming. I found it cute. I found a lot a lot of good scenes. Very like, it's kind of like I was reading like the like the movie Bible of like old archetypal tales of time, uh. But this being the cinema version, um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, not to cut up Jacob a little bit, but I just want to say <clears throat> I think this movie is like a million bajillion times better than 12 Angry Men still. Okay. <clears throat> well, my my initial thoughts, let's see, I mean, I guess, yeah, just to reiterate what you guys sort of said is like, it's definitely classic American uh, cinema and I found myself more charmed than like put off by it. I, would, I didn't really feel like I was... Um, you know, being kept at arm's length, I was more like, oh, my ancestors, like, <laughs> this is, like, real American cinema. Um, yeah, and, I don't know, it's just, it's just a good old time. I really liked, I really liked some of the different, um, like, themes in it, and uh, I thought the preacher character was very, uh, like, convincing, and, you know, it was just a, just a nice, charming, simple little tale. And, uh, yeah, I don't think, in terms of, like, the its stance on religiosity or whatever, like, yeah, I think it, it's sort of, sort of a, uh, like, facile, uh, knee-jerk reaction to think that this is in any way, like, an anti-religious sort of a film. I think it's more of just a cautionary tale of sorts mm -hmm. and yeah, just show, shows you yeah. shows you like sh shows you people who just um <clears throat> like identify with religion and mm -hmm. use it it's like a means as rather than the people who truly like live it and well, uh yeah. yeah i don't know yeah i mean yeah Enjoy if anything it. if anything it like uh yeah it puts up like the contrast between like powell who yeah, uses uses the religion. It to, was basically like, there'll be blood. The, <laughs> who uses like the yeah uses religion to like his own ends or whatever. Where he like it, it's like it's like almost like all of his like rules and principles are some kind of like uh I don't know. I mean, it, it just the whole like uh, sexuality thing or whatever, and like hating hating women, uh, and then that i mean yeah it's like it's like all fueled by like these other kind of like uh personal woes or something but then yeah it's contrasted to like the old lady at the end who is like yeah obviously good and 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 is not and is fueled and is motivated by some kind of religious tendency you know like it's not just like the religion is just like some kind of like extra dressing on top or something like that, you know, like it seems to be kind of more integrated into her character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, hard. She was <clears throat> so awesome. Yeah. The final lady is awesome. I don't know. I wish, um, I wish you could see it with like fresh eyes or whatever. Cause right. There's so much about it that is definitely like mind blowing for the time. I hope that's not why it gets all the love it gets, but like, like think about the degree to which it depicts like a huge separation between like these few well-rounded, intelligent people and the general, very stupid public, mm -hmm. right? Like stuff like this. Uh, I like, I think even that is probably like moderately novel for the time. But um, mm. yeah. Listen, if it were just in color, I would have liked it ten times more. 
<laughs> I liked um I liked how it just like digitally. Yeah. Everything it just seems like the pieces are all it seems like a I and I've used this analogy before, but maybe there there's more of a impetus to use it this time, maybe. But just like a, a lot of the beginning of the film just seems kinda like clockwork, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just like everything's getting set up. And uh, I don't know. There's no like contrivedness to it. It's just like, it's just like simple, simple, good quality storytelling. And uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed. So I like, uh, you know, <laughs> I like this, this whole demonstration <laughs> with the, the hands. For and I thought I I thought this motif was very fun. People need to know. And I tried to track. Tried to track if he was holding the knife only in his left hand. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where well. it says hate. But I think I caught a few times. I think when he kills people, he's holding it in the hate hand. But, uh. Jacob, uh, we're on video call, right? And Jacob has love and hate tattooed on his hands, just like the main character. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. 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 for this bit. This was, this was $200. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, his love hate little, uh, story is pretty cool i i did like that a lot i mean in general the performances are really good especially from the main guy right yeah um, the uh the old woman that encourages john's mother to get married yeah she does such a good job and it's told so well she's one of the most horrible people like <laughs> yeah. i can imagine like oh yeah i hate her so much and that's so good you know like, yeah because she's not even that unreasonable like right, she's right. such she's a perfect so representation plausible. of someone right. that yeah. you know or something right 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 <laughs> just, your grandma yeah like like the or like the bad <laughs> aunt the bad, Brody the, keep leaving? i don't know the bad great aunt she's like she's like someone that's part of your family oh my god also there were lots of funny moments you know like when she when uh when uh she pulls the knife out of the guy's uh coat pocket and she's like men yeah you know yeah yeah that was so <laughs> and then, funny and then also uh also uh, when that guy's like like give him offer him some peach wine he's like, and she's like he's a preacher he doesn't want to drink and then he's like not even a sip and he goes Bloom, you know and he like <laughs> he like downs the peach wine I legitimately yeah, laughed out loud good. at it I thought she it was gets pretty mad funny. at him yeah. yeah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. I was, Lots of funny turns yeah. of phrase as well. That's like, oh, yeah. I don't. We don't, nobody uses that anymore. Well, um, part of it too. I think a lot. Well, whatever. I'm gonna be outed for like this is Wikipedia core, but also okay. it's like obviously true that a lot of the movie, mostly visually, but also dialogue wise, is kind of, um like in some sense meant to represent like a ch- child's perspective. Mm. I think this mm. is most clear in like the set design of like the houses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like everything yeah. is like, uh, everything is like minimalized, but also uh, like accentuated, like the bedroom, yeah. right. Is like super inside of a church, like uh, the bedroom of um, the, when he kills the mom. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Stuff like this. Why is, is that a different bedroom, or is that just a different perspective? What do you mean different? I mean, it from earlier when he was when he was sleeping. Oh right, it does seem like a totally different bedroom. The layout well, I think, it looks no, different, it, I think but it, it's definitely it, just a... it. No, 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 it is because they're on their honeymoon. Oh, is uh, that right? Yeah, yeah they're gone. They are, you're right. They're I gone think... on their honeymoon. That the night when when she first tries to get in bed with him, and he. <clears throat> Like uh, lays it lays it on her. He's Sigma. sigma he, yeah, he Kaiser. does. He reveals that he's a Sigma Prowler. Yeah, um, yeah. Sigma yeah, that Prowler. that. But yeah, that scene. They're on their honeymoon. They're not at home. The kids I are think, like, staying with like the annoying older woman. I think I think what Troy's saying is uh, most like accurate when they're looking out from the house. Right, they're looking into the yard. Like so, a few instances. So Which one house? they see. Mm, all every scene in which the children are looking out through a window or a door into mm-hmm. the front yard or like into the street it looks so obviously like a set like it looks so ridiculous mm-hmm. As, like so when they say it's just a man you know i think when he oh, first yeah. arrives in town it's it's that one and then also uh 
the other one that comes to mind, although I think it happens a couple times, the other one that comes to mind is um, when he's with the old lady and they're both watching through the window mm-hmm. as the man is like sit like staying outside and he's like, the I'll be back at night. So good. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. it like looks, it looks like such a, it's like, always, it look, so designed. It's always at know? nighttime too. Yeah. Like the, or like, or like early or like when they're in the barn. Um, yeah. Like mm-hmm. that one place in the mm-hmm. barn and then it's like you have like the, yeah, wait, I'm not watching the stream, so oh. when you say like this, I'm not... Well, yeah, I mean, like, on. it's just, yeah. they're 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 clearly on, like, a, or they're, like, right, on a soundstage. Right. Like, there, nothing exists right, yeah. past, past right. like, the fence, basically. Yeah, which right, is, right, like, right. Well, it, makes, it kinda... makes it super, like, uh, uh, like, painterly or something, because mm-hmm. it's, like, they're able to, like, focus on having these things be abstracted and these things not be... Um, yeah yeah and that's something and that that's also kind of reflected in like when certain moments you have like the house suddenly looks like really like the ceiling is like freakishly tall and church like and there's mm-hmm. like all this light coming from nowhere and like hard shadows and stuff i don't know lots of all, all that sort of stuff is like yeah, the lighting super is... it looks awesome. yeah the lighting it's the like lighting it's like the really whole sick. It's like the like whole it. the whole thing is like built around the composition. Like the whole set is built around a particular composition, not just like the camera being placed in the right place, you know? Yeah. Two shots that I really like was the first when they're on the honeymoon and uh Mr. Powell, the preacher guy, he gets out of bed and he's just like a he's just like a shadowy figure. You know, that's a good one. And he's like just shrouded in darkness, and then he turns on the light, um, and he is, and it also like the light kind of like just form is forming like a cone around him mm. when he when he uh, like takes up that like preacherly role towards her and is like trying to instruct her, uh, but like right before he's just like this dark figure, like you don't know what his intentions are, and then again when he has her back turned to her while she's praying in the bed. Like, it's another, like, like imposing, like, he has his back turned to you, the audience, like, you don't know what he's, like, if he has an expression, he doesn't, you don't know, his, like, intentions are sort of shrouded in mystery in both of those shots. And I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah, I, in general, just... Also, the mirror thing is fu- is fun right here. Mm-hmm. When she looks at the mirror and then Look. she's looking at the camera. When he yeah, goes very, ta- when he goes MGTOW, MGTOW incel rage and he says, yeah. "Look at yourself in the mirror, you harlot." <laughs> yeah, that's like a yeah gaslighting. Super, like that's like super like Bergman-y thing. He does it all the time. You know, there's like in like every movie, there's like something where he has like a woman like look in the mirror <laughs> and is just like just like yeah. Women are like take a shot. Or... Take take a shot every time a woman looks at herself in the mirror. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. I thought it was weird that the preacher character, you know, we know he's bad and all this stuff, but then in this scene, he's like spot on accurate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. It's weird. Don't you just, oh, what do you think that gosh. was about? <laughs> the business of this marriage is to take care of the two youngins you have. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. And, and then when he goes into town, he's like that harlot wanted to cut, wanted to have sex. No, 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 no. no. no he, he says said he, she wouldn't she bed him. him. She right. turned him away. She wouldn't bed him. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really good scene. I imagine it was so soul crushing for. Oh, her. let's talk about this guy, old this guy, uncle. Yeah. This guy, oh, yeah. he's, he's a fu- no, he's a little fucker. Yeah, he ruined he'd be, everything. You think he'd be cool? You're like, this guy seems like a cool friend. Yeah. Oh yeah, wait, can't. no, he's an alcoholic. Fuck this yeah. guy. He's an, yeah, idiot. he's an alcoholic. Talking about he's a patriot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is that all about? Shout out to I my mean, it's I. I think this is a case where so. It's another case where lots of the movie, you know, you, you kind of have these um, potential criticisms of religion. But then here's a case where this guy's drinking and it's like he's clearly sinning. So that's like a testament to how religion can be useful. Like, it seems like he's sinning and like, like, I don't know, the kids kind of end up fucked because of it. So they have to like leave town or something. It's like the whole town is corrupted. Even the good people like him. There's some issue at their uh, that they're like coping with through sin. Worth noting. About... Sorry. No, you go. This, I think the sun. What a crazy scene this must have been. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the son is probably the only, and he's not even a man. But he's like the only decent male figure in the whole film, and there right, is no right. good man yeah. in the whole film. Well, yeah. then you have you have you have later the old lady says the whole thing about being like a child, like how like a child has mm-hmm. like the strongest will. Mm-hmm. Resilience or or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Highest resilience or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, they they accept their lot. I mean, yeah. The only other decent male figure I can think of is the like coroner guy or what, what the guy that does the hangings. But he's I, I, he's also kind of his hands. Wait, who are does the hanging? In blood. The, uh, he's the introduced. Beginning. I forget yeah, his he, name. Um, yeah, he's like the, he's just some family man. He's like, I think I better quit. Yeah, two things right. though. One, he's there, and he and he and when he gets home, he addresses guy, the woman there as mom. Right through oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I, no, I, I remember. This. So so when he gets home, he addresses that woman as mom. I mean, I don't know if she is or isn't his mom. Uh, she's um, his husband, his wife. Yeah, and then also the guy at Spoons addresses that old lady with him that he's with, you know, as mom. And I'm pretty sure he's also with her. I don't think it's his mom. Yeah, it's and, like it's like yeah. If you have like kids, you like address your spouse's mother. Yeah, which is interesting. I'm sure there's some sort of point to that. Um, and then also, you know, when John ends up fucking man of the house with the old lady, and he's like, "I'll see to what's her name? What was her name? Uh, the the pa- Pearl. P- Pearl." I'll see to Pearl. You know, he's like staying up with her. He's like the only one staying. He's like making coffee. You know, he's like. He's like the he's like a, the man of the house, but like whatever. Yeah. But he's it's also some, but... there's some weird pedophile stuff going on. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe 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 his father, the one that went to jail, could be can be considered no. maybe positive, but probably no, not. No, no, he's, no, he's, he's, he's arguably one of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He literally yeah. was like, what did he say? He, he, was like, he Robin, kills two Robin people. Hood, dude. And then he forces fucking. Then he forces his kids to bear a sinful secret their <laughs> yeah, whole life. Yeah, wasn't he like? Was like? What was his reason for robbing he, the store too? He was just like he, he was just sick of it, right? Like yeah, he was just, he's well, like he said he's yeah. tired of seeing kids like his kids do become exactly wandering with no food, no, no nothing. Um, yeah, and he's like, I'm yeah, he's like, I can't bear to see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure my shit doesn't go like that. And yeah, it it's like breaking. It to it's like, this is. This is little did we know that Breaking Bad was a ripoff. So true. Right, right, yeah. Actually, uh, funnily enough, scenes from this film are in are Better in. Call Saul. Right. What? I didn't know that. There are scenes. Uh, right. a, <laughs> Better Call Saul is uh, like. Have you guys? Know, anyway, there's yeah, a scene yeah, from the film Saul's. where the the preacher is doing something, and it's in the background of a scene where the protagonist of Better Call Saul is acting similarly. Mm. Nice. Also, nice. you, you know, the dude just, abides is allegedly from this film. You can just, uh, you can just like completely acknowledge the fact that you're a dirty scum rat ripping something off, you know. But you can just put it in, and now it becomes an illusion or like yeah, a, a callback. Epic. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you, we, should, we, should, we should kill. Isn't the it crazy? <laughs> Isn't it crazy how the girls, the girl's name is Pearl? I thought that was so cute. <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't find cute, and maybe I'm evil for this. Look, the first sin- look. I just want to say this: is my first cynical take. The last, the last couple cynical takes are purely in jest. This one, I genuinely mean. I found her like her the way of her speech, which you might call an impediment, but I don't know. She's young, so it's not really an impediment yet. Like I found that irritating how Pearl talks. <laughs> well, I kind of, no. I was not was a big fun. Pearl fan. I like when I like when she's yeah. like, I'm hungry, and then he's like, We'll steal some food. And she's like, It'll spoil our supper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a good line. Yeah, she was very cute, but also kind of rage feel when she like yeah, definitely gives it away and, yeah. and like is liking the guy more and all this stuff. Yeah. That's why that's why a little what's this guy's name? But John. But John no, Ben. His name's John? Ben. John. This, the kid's name is John. Yeah, that's oh, why okay. John needs to be the man of the house. The 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 film is really like in a, not in total because at the end it's redemptive but in a way it's like misanthropic it's not just like because you know there's no good male figures basically except for John but also the women are constantly just fucking you know even the old woman says it they're darn fools 
women are darn fools and ruby like is seduced by this preacher even to the very end basically yeah and like gonna kill him (laughs) and and the and the daughter pearl like she like you know likes the guy because he kind of dotes on her you know which Mm -hmm. you know she's just a naive little girl but like there's clearly like this and the mother herself like obviously just gets convinced like immediately by this preacher so like it seems like you know just you know, it, it's just criticizing both genders. Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, I was actually woman, early on. Early every on, every woman I in the film pretty... is convinced, except mm-hmm. for the final woman who only becomes deconvinced by the children, mm-hmm. by John's reluctance. Although she's skeptical at first too. Yeah, she's but, she's sussed well, out kinda, by him. Well, the kids said that her parents are dead, and the guy said that he's a yeah. dad and all that stuff. But I mean, pretty much all the women are convinced, and all the men. Like the only other man that really is the 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 husband of uh, the old lady, the grandma. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. He's like the he's... only other guy who's like witnessing this stuff, and he's skeptical. Yeah. Wait, mm-hmm. wait, wait, wait. The husband of the grandma. The husband oh, right, 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 right. He's skeptical. Right. He's, the one. he's like, I don't know. Spoon Something's not right. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it's it's but a he's good weak detail, and he act. He doesn't act on it. I think it's a good detail like the pure the pureness of heart of like john how uh like even when even when the preacher is getting like arrested and like it kind of seems like he he thinks again that they're just gonna like execute him on the spot or something mm-hmm. and he's like no yeah and then, yeah, he, then he shouts dad scene. he shouts dad yeah, i think it's good because because he is he's he's he he's he has this awesome realization that like dude, this money is so fucking stupid and worthless. It's a, you know, really this film's communistic in that sense. Yeah. Um, And uh, it's, it's just communist propaganda, and that's probably why it was banned ultimately. <laughs> yeah, that's um, probably was rightfully uh, yeah, put in the right. ground. Evil yeah. film. Stopped before yeah. it started. Yeah, McCarthy McCarthy. And that's clearly why it's become popular now. Um, right, right. Wokeism. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was an awesome scene. I really liked it. I love that he's screaming dad. I was worried for a moment that the guy was going to get off because this guy was going to, because John was going to be so like, yeah. you know, like forgiving. And I was like, whoa, fuck that. No, no, no. This guy should get punished. But, you know, because when he refused to like point him out in court, I was like, oh my God, don't let him walk. Don't tell me he's going to walk because yeah. John is like yeah. traumatized or some bullshit, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, but he didn't. It's all good. It's all good. I just want to point out, this is like a good example of like something, I don't know, I, I, I don't know because I hadn't seen films at the time, you know, and I doubt that this is like innovative per se, but this is like, some of the stuff was just too on the nose like this. We're looking at the scene at 15 minutes where like uh, John is telling the story that is just a Egyptian version of their real life story with their dad, which mm-hmm. comically enough ends up you know he's like uh, he's likened unto Moses. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it Moses? Yes. By yeah. The grandma. Anyway, like right, he's sitting. He's got a shadow on the wall, right? And then uh, bad guy's shadow, right, comes over him and encompasses it and all this stuff. Well, this is yeah. a, th- Listen, listen. It looks sick, and it actually was pretty spooky at the time. I thought I was like, woo. But uh. But it's like right. it's kind of like it's like it just feel like a lot of stuff like this feels kind of heavy handed. Well, this is listen, listen, listen. This is I'm listening. This is I feel like the whole movie. So earlier I said something about the film keeping you at arm's length, and I meant that more so not as like a bad thing, but more so as like, uh, like the way, like a um, the way like a. Uh, uh, any like epic like or any folk tale keeps you at arm's length you know it's not so much about like immersion as much as it is about like um it's still very like story-esque and I, I don't know I feel like a lot of the kind of very on the nose or heavy handedness parts of it are like allow it to are like evidence of like the fact that they wanted to be able to have that heavy handedness. They like maybe sacrifice some like subtlety or something, but they can have that heavy handedness so that you can have scenes like the one where like Powell kills her and the house looks like insane. Like it looks like a totally different kind of building, you know, like where it's like 
with the roof all. And so that, and so I don't know, it's kind of like, you open like one door to be able to like do this kind of extreme, like it allows you to, to like kind of create more like extreme powerful like images or moments, but you might sacrifice some of the, some of the like more like, I don't know, subtle, subtle things that you could do, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. Like, like you totally sacrifice realism for a story. You know, yeah. and that's like, that's just like kind of the, I don't know, the, the type of narrative we're enjoying is like, it, it's, you're constantly aware you're watching a story, which I don't think is like itself a bad thing. That just is a way that I think a lot of old cinema did probably, um, and people didn't mind, but like the way we interact with cinema is different now where like we want it to be real. Whereas back in the day, no one cared. They wanted to go see the film. You know, they just wanted to see like a the moving picture. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's like, I don't know. I think I think it's probably a natural progression in like the history of cinema, because like in art too, to like go through these phases of preferring like highly, you know, and it's not just stylized. It's like, like you 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 begin to want to interact with film differently over time and interact with art differently over time. And that includes like this push for realism that then like will obviously be pushed back against uh, like there will be like a reactionary thing where you might say Wes Anderson, for instance, is like a contemporary example of pushing back against realism where it's like it it allows for these really pretty cool things going on that like are like in some ways quirky, but also like aesthetically pleasing. And you're always aware you're watching a movie and at, at no point are you like totally invested the way you are in other films, but it's like it allows for different things and it can still be enjoyable, you know? Yeah. I think the real distinction is like between, um, well, first I'll just say, agree with everything you and John have said. And, uh, this film is definitely <coughs> Brechtian, but, um, <laughs> yeah. nice. uh, thank uh, you. Worth noting that whatever, I mean, I'm sort of, uh, spewing a little bit, but the, the Lawton, like a lot of his acting was in Brechtian theater, but, oh, okay. um, uh, but the real distinction, like, I think the progression is more like film, like it wasn't really accessible in the past to have films that are more like quote unquote immersive, maybe, especially not like the art of day, like where like you have tons of crazy camera angles and movement in, in an editing pace that like you become absorbed by the emotion and, tempo and all these things but um i also wonder about uh, here's your funny scene uh yeah. i wonder about uh it i'm not a big fan i like a story whatever every film's a story but i just mean um a character to relate to or at least attempt to relate to like i don't feel um like very like personally involved with the film and it's tough for me to see the film as like an encrypted depiction of myself when there are no characters to which like I feel mm -hmm. I you even didn't, you didn't partially to identify much? with or you didn't identify or relate to John. Yeah. John would be the guy, right? John would be who you identify with in which case like, yeah, but it's not, it doesn't feel like personal or real enough to the point where like, right. Cause it's like, like John's this archetypal father son relationship and all these like, uh, like kind of like a battling, masculinity and like a weird yeah. relationship I, with his mom and stuff but yeah i uh, i basically agree with you i think that's that's the only thing that holds me back from like enjoying this and a lot of other films you do still want like that investment uh i think when i was reading notice notice to east of eden enjoyers here because of course that book is good but i think as i was reading east of eden there were qualities about it that were awesome um but i felt a relative distance personally the same way you're describing you felt here where you can see characters behaving in certain ways that are really like fleshed out and interesting but ultimately you're kind of observing something now i didn't finish east of eden so mm -hmm. you know fuck me i will say but, well i think it's not the east of eden podcast but there are several characters that are literally me yeah probably not really? though that's the thing Oh, but John, um, John, this is, <laughs> no. John, wait, wait, John I do have one more. I, can I, can, yeah, can I, I need to get on this too. Can, can I, can I say one more thing about the, okay. So about 
John in this movie. I think the only, and this isn't like a trivial way of relating to it, but the only way in which I really relate to him and like powerfully relate to him is just the, like the obvious, like crazy pills idea. Like, wow, everyone truly is on crazy pills. This is fucking ridiculous, you know? And I mean, in day to day life, it can feel that way. You know, you go to, you go to like some like gathering and you're like, holy shit, everyone here is on crazy pills for one reason or another, you know, talk about one thing, whatever it might be like it. And the whole effect of this, like, uh, you know, the tempted society where even like the people, once they find out he's like a murderer, they like start wanting to lynch him and stuff like, like, I don't know, just feeling like a complete, uh, complete outcast. Yeah. But not from anyone's intention. Like no one's intending to make you an outcast. You just, I don't know. Yeah, just yeah. a general alienation. Yeah. I just want to comment on the observer thing. Cause I think the, like, I think it's, totally fit and fair for a film to be or a film or any work of art generally to be like observer related as a, as opposed to maybe like there's a character that's literally me yeah but at least in like in the observer situation where it feels much more like you're 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 like observing a story play out and you're, you're watching different characters that don't really feel like you like you still ought to feel in my book that the story itself is representative of a story like inside you or some archetypal truth that like you know like yeah the a story, story is you a story of but like you. like you look at good ones like like i don't and bk right mm -hmm. like brothers karamazov uh like you don't really identify with any of them everyone wants to be like oh i'm literally Alyosha, right but it's more like right in in the choice of who to think about who you like identify with is like you sort more, of right, right, right integral to with the choices they're making and sure right part of your part of you is Ivan and et cetera et cetera yeah like this didn't feel quite like that with the exception of John and even that is like kind of like a minimal connection um, so. I think so I I'm gonna I'm gonna totally just disagree with everyone in this <laughs> line of thinking you guys have been laying out Let's hear it, dude. Uh, brick by brick so to speak. Um, brecht by brecht i just uh <laughs> i think there's yeah there's nothing wrong with like just watching something that's not like immediately relatable you know and i think that you guys are a lot of this probably just comes from the fact that it this is a more antiquated like style of film you know that you guys are watching like it's more like a play than like modern a modern movie or whatever and that's just like inherently gonna be a little alienating for people so and so you know, thing alive in our and you know right now listen just just stick with me for a second i like i think <laughs> it's still like like art like you see we're just watching something that's like super curated and you know i think that like that's a like equally enjoyable way to like like absorb something is like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that you uh are like relating to one character super heavily or that you're like are immersed in uh some some like aspect of it i think that that's just kind of like modernity bias or something no you're missing and, our uh, point my no i'm just no i'm just i'm just getting my point out poorly okay is like i think that i i, I like i don't see i, I didn't see a, the i didn't take issue with it being this like I don't know more uh, like. Hold on. I know, but you're, I'm saying you're falsely I, I, I identifying say your view things, in contrast so, to ours. Look, I, no, I have to say two things because the pluralization here is a little weird. You guys, I really liked this movie, and my point. No, I'm not saying that. No, I'm not saying that you guys and, didn't and, dislike and I'm it. I'm also, saying this whole also this whole not branch not of. No, no, no. I think it's very no, obvious guys... to point out the difference in the two. I'm not saying I didn't yeah. enjoy it for that reason. Okay, then yeah, whatever. I, I didn't mean I didn't mean to imply that you guys are like hating on it. I'm just saying that like in contrast to what you guys are saying, where you're saying, oh yeah, like it, you know, something that sort of took away from the experience was that you couldn't heavily relate to any one of the characters, and that you were just kind of getting, uh, you may be tripped up by like the presentation of the film. I'm just saying that like I was like like t sort of taking refuge in that like that it was something um i don't know that it was you know i just could that I, I was taking pleasure in just being like an observer to the story as opposed to being like 
being like beckoned by any one thing to like immerse myself in or whatever i don't know like i i didn't see the issue yeah i don't think there is an issue there my point was part of stevens are just acknowledging the distinction that this is more of an observer type film rather than like an i you know identify with a character type film and then i was commenting that with those types of films i feel like uh I mean, most of my favorite, most important films to me or whatever are of the observer type. But so rather than identify with a character in a more like concrete sense, you feel that the, the like you relate to the, the story as a whole as like depicting or being true with respect to like your own life or something. Is, and that's so, what I think you might be right in some sense in like, because I'm saying that didn't happen for me with this film, but that might be. Uh, that could be a result of sort of the time or the, I don't know, sort of like that, the... Uh, that's fair to say. I I think that that could be at play, but I think you bring up Brothers Karamazov was a good point. Because that's a case, I think you're right to say it's an old novel, you know, it's yeah. from the 1800s, you know, and yet it had this different affect on you. But well, you identify I think with you're the right story. to say... Right, I think you're right that it still adopts this observer role, but you yeah. identify well, with can you, a Troy, lot can of it you, a lot more. Can you can you um just to like make it more clear as I mean, I don't know, maybe Brothers K is like perfectly No, I can think of more. Well, I was going to say like a like a film in which like mm-hmm. you can think of like the most extreme of like there aren't characters that I can say like, "Oh, wow, I I'm so this Literally guy or me. that guy, but it's like deeply relatable yeah, and like a more like just yeah. Cries and whispers. Okay. Right, a group of women, all with lives and personalities substantially different from mine. Yeah. Right, but the story playing out is something that's like obviously immediate to any viewer, but also like highly relatable. The dynamics at play, the relationships at play, like you relate to the film itself or shame. Right. I yeah. mean, that I mean, might shame, be a little shame more a little shame more, might yeah. be a little more literally me. Yeah. The sacrifice is pure literally me. Yeah. Not exactly, but super literally me. But yeah, I think Cries and Whispers is a good example. Clearly uh, this wing, guy Wings of Desire. Wings of Desire is kind of literally me. Ten thousand dollars by his dad and uh his dad so wasn't true. killed by the state. Oh yeah, I'm the only one. Yeah, I guess I am one. the only one in this group whose dad wasn't killed didn't. by the state. <laughs> Commit murders <laughs> and kill by the state and I think it's ironic. I mean, I feel like I didn't really get my my point across, and I think it's ironic because you were guys were trying to say that I was like sort of mischaracterizing what you said, but I feel like like I didn't really get what I, I was trying to say out. Can I? Like you guys wait, were wait. kind of uh, lamenting like this. Can I char- of the? No, we're not. can I characterize your view and you sign off on it or not? Uh, sure, as long as it's not a joke. I'm being serious. Okay. You're agreeing that there are different kinds of films, Let's two types, being one where you have a strong identification with a character or characters, and others where you're more of an observant observer, right, watching a story play out, and there is nothing wrong or inherently uh, problematic or anything having to do with stories where you're an observer, and in this situation, it was actually quite nice. Okay, but that's not how how it was being sort of... But this is proof to my point that's not, that's that I know what you're said. saying. Uh, no, and that's not really what I was saying. I'll have to go back and listen to what you guys said because I sort of forgot. Oh my gosh! Look, look, it sounds like I, yo, it's it's important what you said specifically because yeah, yeah. now okay, we okay. can all we can I, hide I, and I like can say, we can I hide in like the look, oh we were not really saying look, that we were more trying to say this. Look, it's like now everyone can look, like infinitely clarify Jacob's, what they really meant, in, yeah, but really like, like I'm trying to respond to something defense, that you said. That's fair. Like, Ten in minutes Jacob's, ago. That's fair, Jacob. In Jacob's defense, Troy, when you had first made your original comment, it was stated that like it's it was implied that it was like uh a that there was a lack had by this film because of the uh missing literally me character in your like first no. time you stated no 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 i'm not saying you're saying that i'm saying it was implied no, I, I think that's not what he said. said i think you'll find if you re-listen that's not what troy said troy was lamenting about something else troy lamented after that troy said 
And now that we've agreed that observer, this movie is observer mode, now I will say that a book like Brothers Karamazov did the observer mode better. So he was lamenting about the movie in that sense, like he was saying it could have been done better, but it, he wasn't. He was never saying that the movie, for having this observer perspective, was bad. I don't believe he ever said that. Boom. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, that sounds fair. My main point is that, yeah, it's observer mode and there's nothing wrong with that. But then within observer mode, I still want to relate to the film as a whole, right? If not a character, and I didn't feel uh, a strong you guys, relation. You guys are in full damage control mode. It's, <laughs> quite frankly, it's hilarious to see. I'm just saying, if you couldn't get this movie, maybe it was too abstract for you, okay? Maybe you should <laughs> stick to watching Marvel, you know? Yeah, probably. Um, what about when... Um, oh, yeah, go ahead, Brody. What, what about no, when lines are in the river? Dude. Oh, so true, so corrupt. Yeah, I totally forgot. He finds the dead woman and doesn't tell anyone. Yeah, he gets drunk. He's a coward. Yeah, <laughs> literally me. If for the viewers at home, I'm I'm drinking a four loco at eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> the OG four loco with yeah. caffeine banned in California. Yeah. Jacob has a stockpile. Yeah, I I snapped them all up. Corner of the market. Yeah, man. yeah. Sells them online. Yeah. Twenty dollars each. Under the alias. Okay. God. So. I just want to make sure we all have the same take with respect to this point, and I'm sure we all agree that this film is essentially <laughs> ruined by the couple of moments where you can see wires that was and funny. various things like that. Yeah, yeah uh, that, I, that I, I, is I, surprising some t- when that yeah. sort of thing happens. Like, I because they because there's it. clearly because like there's thing there's other technical things going on that are like incredibly difficult to achieve and done extremely well like especially with like lighting and you'd think that if they're gonna have this owl like they'd know not to like backlight the wires so that you can like see them obviously and it like makes me like that that's so obvious that it's like kind of shocking that it happens and like almost makes me well no, because I think yeah, oh, I want. Like I'm like combating a point. I think Jacob and Mike. But I just want to say not in a, not in any contrast, to Jacob. But yeah, like I think there's like a tendency to be like, oh yeah, it's old film. They're stupid, but they're obviously not. Like for example, there's a scene very early on that I'll try and pull up where it's a helicopter shot of the town, yeah. right? And it's really shaky, right? And you observe it, and you where is it? So it's like the very beginning. Can, can you also? There might be a continuity oh, right here, yeah. error at the start with the car. I don't know that for sure, but mm-hmm. I would have to rewatch. But the car right. he arrives in, I think, goes away. So this this is the shot I'm thinking of, right? This is super early on the film, two minutes in, and it's like the super shaky helicopter shot, and like the maybe the impulse is to be like oh like this was supposed to be a smooth shot like i've seen a million times before right they just couldn't make it smooth because technology and they're stupid but it's like no they know what the shot looks like right it's meant to be shaky they know you know they know what it looks like they have fucking eyes and they did that <laughs> you tell me they're right. just saying i'm just saying I mean, to come back like I mean, they know what these things look yeah. like they're not uh, fools and like they know what they're doing but then, yeah, you have this weird, yeah, because the lighting I, is super technical. There's all these very technical, um, technically impressive things. They have deep focus on a frog, right? When they're when they do the frog on the, you know, what I'm talking about frog, frog on the cool. rock. Frog is cool. Deep focus, like these are technically impressive things. <clears throat> and then, yeah, they have like, like there's some that are just super easily avoidable, oh. like this boat right here where it's got like a wire on the front. You can see it pulling the boat. Oh, like, I didn't see that one. Yeah, that's the main one so, to me. Because yeah, like the oh, only that's... other wires I saw was like I don't know on the owl. There's a wire. Also, quick shout out to this shot, which was uh, this is a midget on a mini horse. <laughs> Are you serious? That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, no you know, think yeah, think about how they would like this would be very difficult. Or they couldn't pull it off like this with it. anyway. Wait, yeah, wait, th- this shot is. I could imagine. Wait, wait, wait. I thought... Troy, Troy, are you telling me that this shot is like a this is singular? This is well. It well. It's not a yes. double exposure Sorry. either. It's like it's no, a... no. It's all in camera, single normal. Wow. This is a hill not that far away with a midget on a mini horse. Wow, yeah. that's just amazing. Well, just just to explain, it looks like there's a, a horse and a person very far away. Yeah, but... this is where the the kid is in the barn. 
while they're on the run and yeah. he looks out and, and sees and... the uh the priest yeah. looking for him. Wow, that's that's, that's so incredible. Awesome. Like I Yeah. That's amazing. If I could just give my take in defense in defense of myself, which I was never even accused or well, i was implied to be accused <laughs> no but then i undid I it give. i undid it i said Listen, immediately after this is not in contrast to jacob <laughs> my take my take was going to be that it's just like dumb to get it's like not dumb like obviously it's like haha that like you can see a wire at some points but like it's kind of dumb to get hung up on that when like the whole I don't know, like, the, most of the shots are, like, shot in, like, a warehouse with, like, painted walls, and, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, the whole thing is obviously uh, not, like, ultra-realistic. So, I mean, yeah. like... I don't think anyone's okay. getting hung up. But I think our point is, like... And I'm not sometimes... talking to any of you, I'm just, yeah, like, yeah. talking to, like, the proverbial person yeah, I would be, like, yeah. Yeah, dude, would, there's no, a that's wire. A, that's like, a, the, whole thing that's is, the whole thing is shot in a warehouse. Worth like, up. it's... Yeah. yeah, it would be stupid to get hung up on, but... I think there is kind of a point to be made. Like, it's weird to see the contrast between, like, highly technical, proficient work with something that, like, you and I could do better. Like, put the wire under the water, you know? Attach it to the part of the boat that's under the water. I mean, I this, is, was... this is another thing. I mean, this is another thing to think about is, like, some of these, some of these things that could be, well, I don't know. There's, like, th yeah, some of these things that could be seen as, like, mistakes or something like with like the wire in particular it was um, all intentional well i mean <laughs> like possibly intentional but also Very like also end. also you think about like i mean they're shooting film like they are on some kind of a budget and they like I don't know. I imagine like the stuff, the water set, they have like a very like tight schedule with how long they can have like this water set and like, yeah, just blah, 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 blah. And then like they go Hollywood. and they watch, they're like watching the dailies. They're like watching the dailies like the next day and being like, oh my gosh, you can see the wire. Like we got to like, and then, and then like, and it's like, we can't afford to reshoot it. It's like, it's fine. It's not I a have deal. a counter theory that's way more likely. <laughs> Every day when they get on film, on set, it's on like, set, where do we put the wires? They start drinking, and <laughs> by the end, they were filming this maybe, you know, 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, you know? And they're just way too hammered to realize. They're just super <laughs> drunk. Yeah, that's pretty Pro likely. Probably that. That's yeah, probably that's it. Yeah, that's probably it. it. Just imagine yourself in, like, 1950s Hollywood. Like, some, like, some, like, tech is, like, hooking up that wire and, like, there's some guy like smoking a cigarette like over him. It's so like, ah, yeah, hurry up! Like, we gotta shoot, <laughs> and everybody's yeah, drunk. Like, uh, get this cigarette. thing in the water. Everyone's so drunk. Get this thing in the water. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Like yeah. They, they, Everyone's smoking you, cigarettes. If you've with seen, if you've seen Hail Caesar, like Here you'll know. <laughs> so here's, here's, here's the wire. Now, why didn't they use the money to just run away and just buy a house for themselves to live in? Instead of having to shack up Dude, with some because old. because why are these, why are these the, eight year olds so stupid? Because that's the, what I no, no, no 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 no. As soon as they, they didn't spend they any the of money. the money, yeah right. Because you can spend money as a little kid on a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but, people aren't just gonna be but, like, "What the fuck? Where are your parents?" <laughs> <laughs> no, you do not get this house, and we're taking you into the cops. <laughs> What's the movie where the kid runs away on the motorcycle at the end? Home Alone. Tron. <laughs> I don't know. Tron like but, Ghost Rider. You know what? Based movies. Does it even like where'd the money go? Does it matter, bro? Well, matter. I, well, it's repoed wait, by wait, the wait, state. Wait. Hold on, obviously. hold on. You, you think it's Christmas time? Or they loin? Well, he pours it all over him. Or they loined the coffers of uh, of that police bureau, and they all had a crazy night loined out. Loined the Easily coffers. <laughs> Yeah, definitely the money is just gone, and it's like, who cares? Because he gives her an apple wrapped in tablecloth. Yeah. What do you mean? Where's the mo the money? Is not just gone. The money has been returned to the state. It's effective. So? That's effective. Well, he pours gone. the money. He pours the money on, and then they're gonna be yeah, like, but, "Where's the money?" They're gonna. They're, look, gonna they're in a whole like, different county. You think those cops? You know, you think the interstate communication is good? Yeah, I mean, they got him on some like twenty-eight <laughs> kills that he's been doing all county or something. He's affiliated kills. With I'm not kidding. Yeah, he's worked for some shit like that. Twenty-eight kills, you know that, right? Dude, they got this guy thinking, for a Kilimanjaro. No, I was he, of a, a place no, no, no. This is true. This is true. This is true. Because they say like you're under arrest for something murder, like blah blah blah. Does he? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, he he dies. 
No, no, he's arrested. He's arrested, and it's no, for it's for the murder of someone, not even her mom, not even his mom. What he's arrested for like the murders of other things. Oh no! And sorry, the first I'm woman. To... Oh, you're okay. Who are you talking? So I'm talking to Jacob. Yeah, oh, okay. in a place but... beyond the pines when they when the kid drives away on the dirt bike at the end. But he doesn't. He does. That, no, he doesn't. The prota- the kid or the prota- the protagonist is killed. Yeah, the protagonist is killed, and then the and then the second protagonist is killed. Is the son? I see the son. The son who almost kills the son. What's his name? The is the son of Ryan Gosling. Yeah, son of Ryan Gosling, and he almost kills. Uh, who's that actor? The guy from Limitless. Bradley Cooper. Bradley right. Cooper, and he's the cop. Bradley Cooper's a cop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, this is now this is now he's... an episode on Place okay. Beyond the Pines. <laughs> and. <Yeah. laughs> Okay, sorry. But does he ride away on a motorcycle? Yeah, that's cool. That's badass. It, yeah, it's a refer. It's an allusion oh. to Hollywood cinema, cowboy cinema, communism. Why do you think Commie, the professor cowboys? liked this film so much? Do you think do you, he probably saw it when he was ten? Do you think? Do you think? He saw it. He saw it in theaters when he was ten. Yeah. yeah. Do you think his father stole a bunch of money? You know, <laughs> I, I think this I movie just is like super unique and it's like kind of it, the its take on religion is unique for the time. And like really and like the reason it was banned, it had this like this like uh, oh, it was actually banned. This is very well, from, from various locations, not from all across the country, but it was banned in several locations that took the Legion of Decency and other committee. Okay. If it some places took the, their review seriously, so it was banned in some places. But uh. But in other places, it was released. It but got, I'm sure it got banned for spreading disinformation. <laughs> but I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that there was something subversive about it. You know, it's like ooh, it's this, it's this thing that it's it's a crazy looking movie that like, you know, it, it's just it stylistically is very different than a lot of things. Uh, its subject matter is a little bit subversive. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know. And like the yeah no, and the critiques at the time were like. Basically, like this shit is boring. Like, oh, they're, so like it's crazy, boring. Right? Yeah. There's like a bunch of like, like, like you can imagine, like it shows like a shot of a frog as the as the boat you know drifts aside. Yeah, how boring! Dude, like this is like <laughs> boring. Like what a waste of time. Like stuff like this. I'm I don't know. Maybe most, not. Most famous films of 1950. At the same time, yeah, you have like Battleship they Potemkin, watch, they which weren't is even watching before this. Spider Man. They know? weren't watching Spider Man. Also, no, I think the the preacher point is like cringe for us, but you can imagine a film made today where like a villain is of a certain, you know, class or political or whatever, you know. Uh, did they had rebels? Just say, whoa, 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 whoa. Just say race. Huh? Race? That's what you're saying, right? No, That's I'm what thinking. You're trying to say, I'm right? actually. No, no, I'm not actually. I'm not trying to imply a black villain. <laughs> no. I'm actually just saying. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just saying like. <laughs> you can imagine pretty easily, like, you know, pick the topic of the day, you know? Right, right. And, like, it would actually be super controversial. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it'd be... It'd be uh, this, isn't, this isn't controversial, and this is not what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. But it just made me think of how people are like, uh, you know, the Thanos snap. You know, Thanos was actually doing a good thing for the world. There's, like, a whole, like, niche... There's, like, some argument where, like, Thanos so was cringe, doing yeah. the... Yeah, Thanos the, did the right thing. Yeah. Uh... Dude, Thanos is the perfect example of a villain well, whose motives make sense. They say they say there's arguments that Thanos is a perfect economist, a fascist, utilitarian, cool, conservative. Listen, we all know that this yeah, film, cool. Night of the Hunter, got all the hate because it was, you know, very Kierkegaardian in nature. Big time critique of organized religion. Right. The hero, the hero woman, has a highly subjectivized and personal relationship with God and Christ. Yeah. Um, this is uh, that stuff's all cringe. That's why yes. they. That's why they wanted to shut this down. I was gonna. I was thinking there wasn't enough uh, hot girls in it. I'm looking at the that's night. True, I'm actually. looking at the night. I'm looking at the most famous films of 1950s. And if Marilyn Monroe, um, Grace Kelly, or Audrey Hepburn's not in it, then it doesn't exist Grace on Kelly. the board. The the mother in this movie is like giga famous, and she always plays like the the original. You know, the John's mother. She always, according to my dad, she always plays a role where she just is like an evil bitch or something like that. 
<laughs> and or I don't know, like that's what she got typecasted as. <laughs> it, she has a crazy stare, like when she's uh, she, yeah. a couple times she's just staring into the into the abyss, and it, it looks so awesome. Yeah, dude, dude, her um her like uh religious conversion speech thing, like in the torchlight, yeah. so yeah. crazy. Mm. Like probably probably one of the better ones of that like kind of scene. Like I think that I've seen, I don't know that I can think of immediately. I don't know. It reminds me, it reminded me of like uh, there will be blood. Like uh, there's like a couple like yeah. uh, religious like tirades. Yeah. Um, I thought this we were actually, talking about the old woman. Uh, no, no. This uh, actually is a pretty crazy scene. I thought the uh, the like it's out of the blue. The whole tattoos on his hand, love and hate. I thought that was like. So it's just so ridiculous. I mean, I'm not, and this isn't a fault to it. It's like the whole point is that it's kind of ridiculous. Is like, how could anybody s- see him tell that story and not think, holy shit, this guy is weird? <laughs> you know, like, how could you like fall for his like charm? And it's like tattoos at the time were even more reviled than now. And then also, like, t- but then I thought, like, wow, even today, like, People might actually fall for something like that. Like you could actually just tattoo love and hate on your hand and tell a story like that. And you could like get in deep with like, you imagine go to a party, you know, like going, going to a house party and you do that little trick. And like a lot of people would be like, whoa, bro, that's kind of dope. You know, like, I don't know. There's, well, yeah. Go maybe on. I'll give it a go. Also just like talking to old people, like old people, like would 100% fall for that shit. Yeah. They like, love it. It's a good story. <laughs> you get into it. They, you're like, like he's, uh, he's triumphing. It's like, as, as somebody talks to elderly, <laughs> elderly, somebody talks yeah. to elderly, elderly people on like a, like a, you're, pretty, a, you're an authority on talking frequent to elderly basis, people. Right. Pretty frequent basis. I know that they would just eat that up. Just like the, the old woman and all the other people Dude, in this it, town. I think it'd be really funny to do a parody of it where we have a guy doing it and he has love and hate and he says, and look at that. Oh, love is, oh, what's he doing? He's fucking hate. He's <laughs> fucking hate. He's doing it. It's crazy. Look at what he's doing to him. I don't know. I think that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> I want to I wanna, I wanna go to a frat party with this written on like Sharpie on my fingers and I tell everybody that it's a tattoo and I just reenact the scene over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> just, just do it as it, many, yeah. yeah. Just do it as many times as you can before, like, you run out of people to do it to, and like keep yeah. doing it after yeah. that. Still, like, that could be a good man on the street where you get someone like, oh, I want to tell you a story, but then like the <laughs> the, bat, the 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 battle part just goes on indefinitely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just keep doing that until they just walk away. I, <laughs> yeah. I thought they say, and now you must take charge of the battle. You can't you, you, <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you pull out Who a tattoo wins, gun. You decide. You pull out a tattoo gun. Uh, yeah. The um, I was gonna say I thought something more was gonna come of the hands. Like I thought I thought there was gonna be a more like were, on the nose attention. like symbolic, like um. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was going to work its way into, like, the climax somehow or something. Unless it did, and I'm an idiot. No, that's actually fair. I thought that they were going to at least feature a little more heavily in the film. And, and, and some Yeah, sort of dir- the director just thought it'd be cool. And it turns out it was. It was cool. He shows yeah, up on set. Cool. What if... Should've... I just had an idea. What if... Yeah. 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 Hold, he's holding a pen. No, he's holding a pen as he's trying to, like, up. convince everybody it's a good idea. Get this. Guys, the actor so listen. Shows up and he, he, the actor shows up, and he, last night he got so drunk that he got the tattoos, <laughs> and now they have to incorporate in the story somehow, yeah. otherwise yeah. the movie's ruined. No, the director, the director, this is what he does. He shows up, and he's got it already drawn on his hands, and he's just like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. On a serious note, on a semi-serious note, semi-serious. on a one joke, on a one joke note. note, and one serious note, on a something sweet note. Speaking of this mom, first of all, we're talking about Brechtian. We should be talking about how this movie fails the Bechdel test. Secondly, <laughs> so fucking true. Uh, so like, does she just like, she like sacrifices herself to him, right? Because it, you yeah. kind of, I feel like you know, she knows that he's about to kill her, and she just takes it. With her eyes closed, sacrificially, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Preceded by this conversation well, where she's confessing to him that she knows that he is, like, he tricked her. But she still thinks that he's a good man. Like, it was all... Well, yeah, did she say, the good did she say something about how it's, like, he's still a good dude? Yeah. Yeah, she says so something she says, like how he's still there to save her. Okay. Yeah. Ultimately. 
she's like, I know you basically, she's like, yeah, I know you lied about the money and you think, and you, and the bill, but, but that's not why you married me. You married me to convert me and save me and stuff like mm. that. But then she sees, he's gonna, I don't know. I just think it's weird. She like sacrifices himself to him. None of my girlfriends have done that. <laughs> mm-hmm. This woman is in uh, Lolita. Really? Yeah. Which one? I think. She plays is the she, man. Is, is she the little girl? Um, the first one? The, the Kubrick one? The Kubrick one, yeah. She's the mom. Sorry, I just, I just realized that. She's not Lolita. Yeah, I think she's the mom. I haven't seen Lolita. So, you know, you has. know, it was a book before a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, Billy Chapman looks so familiar, but I just don't know what. Who who's Billy Chaplin? Who's the character? Like, the John. Okay. Oh. Um, like Dude, he he him. looks so much like his dad in the film Film Dad. Film Dad. He's in he's in something that's like really famous. You probably recognize him from playing the uh the voice of the dad character in Ratatouille. Right. <laughs> the the right. dad rat. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh I like the little Home Alone 2 moment. When he totally owns the preacher, uh, right? Little tricks, yeah. and yeah. then I With love the, like knocking the yeah, stuff knocking off the, the, stuff on yeah. the shelves and turning the light out. And the way the he light out. the way he smothers the candle, yeah, yeah. That was sick. very home alone. Yeah, I was I was pretty excited during that part, and especially when he when he came up with a little plan to I'm assuming to initially lock him in, but then he was getting he was he was you know. Getting owned. Getting owned, but then Getting he... adult owned? Yeah. Because obviously the adult's going to say, yeah. yes, show me, okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. And then I'm... Uh, for some reason, the main thing that sticks out in my head... Well, there's two main things. The one the obvious one, which is the classic scene of uh, the shotgun on the window while singing that mm-hmm. little tune. But yeah. but my second But my second favorite part of the movie was when he goes, this is concrete. And uh, <laughs> and I was really hoping he's gonna get hit in the head right then because that would have been comedically uh, very funny, um, but nonetheless, it was still very funny. It is a sign of the time. I wish the preacher had been a little more vicious, like a little more. Um, I thought he played a uh, a little more competent in his evil. A good sociopath. Yeah, I liked the whole vibe, and I loved the whole right snake and. Uh, was, I like when he, I like when he thing. snapped at Pearl. Yeah, when he finally was, just yeah. snapped and he couldn't take yeah. it because because he, he ultimately he is unhinged. He's not like a perfect criminal, you know. Yeah, like, he like just um, couldn't fucking take it anymore. Well, yeah, his his like uh, seeming like stupidity though, I felt it was very akin to like when the kids are like, he's like, yeah, it's in the basement, like yeah, like come look at the. And he, like, kind of is, like, he, like, for a second, he's, like, going for it. And then he's, like, oh, wait a second. You almost had me. And, like, had him, like, come in front of him again. I thought that that whole thing was very, like, it reminded me of, like, uh, like the Big Bad Wolf or something. And it's, like, right. oh, what yeah. eyes you have, Grandma. And then, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's very, it very fairy tale ish where, like, the the way in which somebody tricks someone is not, like, Mm-hmm. It's not like a realism yeah. thing, you know. It's like more. It's like this, like kind of very storybookish. Like, uh, you almost had me there, like kid. Yeah, he's very much like a like a villain character, rather than like a real person which, villain. Which is interesting because he also has like this kind of very, like, uh, contemporary, like uh, psychological motivations, you know, with his like. Uh, his whole like repressed like sexual uh thing going on you know like i felt like that was like that's like it, it's less like classic evil and a little more like contemporary like individual character or something well do we think he's based schizo like the beginning at least had me convinced that he actually was on uh like he saw himself as on a mission from god like the way he's talking to God, or do you think this was just like blasphemy humor for himself? No, I think no, he's, he's based with schizo. It. Yeah, yeah, he's based schizo. Yeah. Um, that's kind of cool. also also pretty sigma. What? Yeah, sigma, you think yeah, sigma, 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 sigma mission from God. You think sigma there's any connection in uh, in Reservoir Dogs that that other <laughs> sociopath character that 
that you know cuts the guy's ear off. He looks like exactly like this guy. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a switchblade, and it's just kind of like the same sort of vibe. It's an homage. Yeah, um, might be yeah this is might this be, movie uh, is an homage to Quentin violence. Tarantino's original, <laughs> fully original masterpiece. Film. Original masterpiece. No, I'm saying it's you know I'm yeah being yeah. like you know no, the reverse. I'm, yeah. No, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying. Um, I think it's just I think it's just like Italian anti-Italian stuff. Probably. Yeah, clearly. Very. I mean, the preacher looked sick. Um, he was a sick looking dude. I, yeah, and it's funny that he has the black hat at one point when he's on the horse, or maybe yeah. before then too. But he's got he's like a it's like a super OG villain style. Yeah, you know, like almost Dude, like a costume. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff of them like going down the river, all the stuff with it where people were like singing, where all of it was so good. Like when the little girl sings the song and they're on the river, and then yeah, obviously like the whole like end thing where he's outside the house singing and. I don't know. So Dude, crazy. The film was remade in 1991 as a TV movie. Yeah, well, I, I saw that when I looked podcast. it up on Letterboxd. No, it'd be funny if we were like, well, and oh shit, it was. Re- Wait, I think that's the one I watched, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's probably like the same movie, anyways. But I didn't realize it wasn't on Criterion, so I had to scramble to go. Yeah. To go rent yeah, it. To go rent Bezos, it. Bezos yeah. sucked my four dollars. Nobody, nobody told me that I'd have to spend money. I almost. <sighs> I almost just called it. That's, that's we can write it all. We, well, we can write it off on our taxes. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is a tax, this is a business this is, expense. This is, yeah, this is a business expense. The this just business. Uh, now, <laughs> is it the second best film of all business. time behind Citizen Kane? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, Stephen? Now, is it the second best film of all time after Citizen Kane? <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, is that what not. it's? Is that? Is that some list? No, list that's that? just one French, yeah, French cinema. Cashier du cin- or, how would you say that? Cahier- wait, a friend, wait, a fr- wait, a French guy put two that's American films in the top no, two cinema. Fr- yeah, a famous French cinema magazine. A cinema magazine put two American films as its top two. Dude, America French, used yeah. to be the shit, man. America Mogs, dude. Mm-hmm. American film was the shit, man. <laughs> Dude, speaking of, and that's our song. We're talking about Pain and Gain now. Um, dude, I haven't seen it. Please don't spoil. Dude, it's, it seems like such a fun movie. Don't spoil it. It's actually awesome. Yeah, it seems really fun. I, it seems I like knew it was the perfect what, what, uh, Michael what's Bay What's his name? Movie. Michael Bay, yeah. I, I'd always heard Michael Bay had made an art film. <laughs> and now, at, uh, now I know. Yeah. Did he make an art film? Okay, you're the only yes, person Yes, it's called it. Pain and Gain. Is it actually, or is it just awesome? No, it actually is. Really, oh, yeah, it's so cool. It started. is. It is like legit. Like Mike, it's Michael Bay. Um, I don't even know. It almost it's, feels like Michael Bay was cast. You know? Yeah. Well, like there's a different. Fiction. Like there's a mastermind. Other than Michael Bay. You but know, it he, is. He uh, used to be on gear. Good. You know that, right? Huh? Michael Bay used to be on steroids. That's cool. That's, that explains why he's so fucking sick as fuck all the time. Yeah, he's pretty, <laughs> he, used hang, he used to hang out with It actually gym. is <laughs> pretty cool. cool. It's good. That explains why he's so fucking awesome. Uh, makes I, cool explosions. I had something to say so long ago about the movie that he we got actually his, watched, and I my, don't remember what it was. Michael Bay got, Michael Bay got Perfect. muscle Perfect. reductions. Dude, Michael Bay... It gives us more I'm, time to talk about pain I'm pro. I'm pro. I'm, I'm pro Michael Bay. In general, he's so ambulance. He's so dude. I want to see. It. I haven't seen it yet. I want to see it. So you do bad. ambulance seems fun. Yeah, he did ambulance. Yeah. He did ambulance. Did he do ambulance? He did ambulance. Wait, did he? It looks like it's gonna. It looks like something slightly off about that movie. Ambulance. Yeah, and that's. I it's agree. Because, and I want to see because it for that. Because the reason. entire movie was shot Ambulance. on FPV drones. So awesome. I mean, just get no, it's no, not, not the whole movie, but a a, a lot, lot of, of the movie is shot on FPV drones. Well, it just it's, seems so. Awesome. Uh, it just seems so fucking fake. Like, okay, another heist movie. You're never gonna make heat. I'm sorry, never. Gonna Dude, make it, it, to me, all it right, gave what's me the speed best vibes. Movie? You know, speed, <laughs> speed with Keanu do, Reeves. Do you know what heist? Yeah, it gave sucks. me vibes like that. Dude, I've seen every what's heist. The, what's the heist movie there. with Ben Affleck? <laughs> We're gonna make Point Break. Okay, <laughs> what's, the, what's the Ben Affleck heist movie that sucks? The town. That movie sucks. 
<laughs> dude, Ben Affleck I seeing ads sucks. Dude, Ben Affleck and Dude, general, I really don't Ben, ben Affleck, 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 Ben Affleck, Affleck sucks. sucks. Big dude, ben Affleck is the dude, worst. Terrible performances and continually like makes and produces movies just in which he's the star. And they're embarrassing. And it's like super embarrassing for him. Like I watched Argo recently. Holy cringe, dude. dude and it wouldn't boring, be bad man. if he it wouldn't be the embarrassment comes from the fact that he is producing the film. Well, and directing, and then, I think, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has produced and directed a bunch of films wherein he's the protagonist and does a bad job and it's also like weird to think he's he wanted himself to say certain things that just are terrible <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true if there's ever a moment where the main character says something that like you raise an eyebrow at it double does it because you're thinking yeah. of the fact that he yeah. cho- he really thought yeah. that this was his moment you know yeah yeah, yeah that's true it's that's so funny. funny we we truly are argo Dude, Argo I saw Argo in theaters when it was released. I thought it was like, all right. And then I think it yeah. won a bunch of Oscars, and I was like, what? That movie was like yeah. just fine. It totally, I was hyped. I saw it, yeah, I saw it a long time ago, kind of when it came out, and I was like, that was pretty cool. And then we watched it, and it was terrible. But yeah, it won like a bunch of stuff. And it's just like this weird propaganda movie. I, you know what yep. I also watch? Dude, Saving Private Ryan, more like holy propaganda. True. Dude, what yeah, about that? Did it, you ever see the take? Give your take. Well, I just I just watched it, and like, of course, you know, America loves to milk World War Two for like, yeah. you know, really uh, good, you know, feel good war films. Uh, but then it tries. I feel like it tries to like depropagandize itself by showing the brutality of war, but it's actually still, yeah. But like, it's actually uh, just like actually, actually this just is awesome. like totally based in like super. Yeah, this was like actually really moment. cool. Yeah, and a hero like, moment. Like. It, I don't care what anyone says that the the opening scene, Kino. Of course. Exactly. <laughs> of course. Propaganda. That's exactly that. Dude, wait. Most yeah. people will be like people are like, Oh dude, it's so brutal. It shows how war is awful. It's like, no, that's actually super cool. <laughs> oh, it's like what about, it's uh, like euphoria or whatever. Where it's like it's just like, no, all these kids do sex and drugs, but it's actually super like aesthetic and sick. <laughs> yeah. It's oh like, right, right. Like yeah. like 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 it's ve- it's things where the most ridiculous take would be to say that it's criticizing that lifestyle when it's obviously like aestheticizing it. Yeah, you know? but it's like into it's like super, into, into it's like making it like super to, extreme so that it's like extra cool because then it like it's like able to become like uh, taboo again because it's been so like yeah, it's like it's yeah. like it's Just, reinvigorated as like some extreme, yeah. you know, so like it's it's made extreme again. You guys trying to get banned right now or what? No, no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to tell. I have a short. I'm wait, saying wait, that's wait, what wait. you guys are doing. I just wanted to ask uh, about. I just wanted to ask everyone really about. Cannot talk shit about, on Euphoria. I just wanted to ask everyone about Chris Kyle and about that movie Chris American Kyle. Sniper. <laughs> did, did you ever see American Sniper? Bradley yeah, Cooper's the star. I haven't seen it. Is it? Is it? What do you think of it? It's like super propaganda. But is it good? <laughs> Dude, come on! Like, come uh, on! Like Marvel fun, movies yeah, are propaganda, I, but. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun. It's not as fun as you'd want. Like, I love a good sniper flick, sniper kino. Right, and it's right. not, it's, Boom, it's not even shot. that great, but it's pretty cool. I just want, can I, can I, can I briefly, on a total aside? Oh yeah, we, yeah, about, this, we yeah. haven't been on a side. No, 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 but this will be even worse because we can't. Even, I'm the only person who can even talk about this. We've been doing this for. <laughs> nah, this movie I care a lot. Have you guys seen this? I can't see your Netflix original. Everyone's videos. Holy smokes. Have, yeah. Dude, everyone's videos are fucked for me. Dude, this movie is the most cringe thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like total girl boss. Uh, like literally explicitly talks about how she's a girl boss all the time. What is it? Her job see. is to like totally rip off and like brutalize the elderly. And it's not, I'm not like rephrasing it in a way that like, like the film is obvious that she's a villain. She's a very bad person. And then she comes into contact with a different villain and the whole movie is watching them go at each other and all this stuff. And then in the very end, the the two villains decide to team up and become giga villains. And they start this huge international corporation of brutalizing the elderly. I'm not even joking. And she becomes super girl boss, rich and famous billionaire. She's on TV and all this stuff. And that's the end of the movie, except then they have some normal person just shoot her. Because he's he doesn't like what she does. That sounds true. That's like the that's like that's Gandhi. Something. That's that's like Gandhi. So and, stupid. Have, if you've seen Gandhi the film, that's literally what happens. I it's have seen speak- Gandhi the film. Except like, Gandhi isn't like pure evil. The Gandhi whole movie. Is Speaking of evil, evil film, that's the propaganda. Mm-hmm. Speaking of evil movies, yeah, was Gandhi a bad guy? Real quick, 
I'm like Ooh. actually kind of up in there on Gandhi I mean, these yeah, days. You, yeah, yeah same, same, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've guzzled. I've guzzled so much Ganda. Um, Ganda Ganda. Not, as Zizek <laughs> says, he's he's we're more not, violent than Hitler. We're not gonna. <laughs> Zizek has said that. <laughs> more violent than Hitler. Like we're not gonna talk about free Tibet right now. Listen, we're gonna talk about we we're talk gonna about, talk about talk about evil. Talk about evil movies. Do not see X produced by A24 Studios. Uh, is that, is that, it looks that, it looks so yeah, evil. Yeah, that's the it's it, a it's which, a like which, a, which one is that? Adult film horror like horror movie, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Evil. Evil, pure evil. Yeah. yeah, it seems pretty evil. Oh yeah, I saw ads for this. It looks gross. Quick shout out, the most evil film I've ever seen in my entire life, Possessor by Cronenberg's son. <laughs> that's awesome With, from without a doubt most evil thing i've ever seen in my life are we going to make a movie that aestheticizes uh clean living that aestheticizes <laughs> clean uh being <laughs> clean good clean living yeah, yeah. Uh, that aestheticizes uh organic going, going, diets. Yeah, going to work on time <laughs> and sweeping the floor keto organic you know? diets. keto and keto the movie so yeah true. yeah being on keto because you know all of these, keto, all the these movie. films you know they're they're aestheticizing uh deviant behavior guys right we have to morph the culture into our I, own image i so guys true. i need a i need Wait, a next, back next in. week we're talking about cuties I, right oh my okay listen <laughs> let me reel it back in did anybody else look obviously he takes more of a like the main the main bad guy in night of the hunter pal he he the main the main bad, bad guy, guy. What main. on earth? What is it? Listen, <laughs> society is the other John, main bad guy. Like the main money, money, money is the other bad. <laughs> like the big, yeah. the big John, bad uh, man. He, I thought he was gonna, I thought he was gonna go more in this direction. But from the beginning, I was getting like big time, like uh, the judge from Blood Meridian. <laughs> uh, there's another example I had in my head. Oh, kind of like No Country for Old Men, like Anton Sugar, like just like. Kind of this like wandering, uh, like force of evil or something like that. I mean, he becomes like a little more like humanized, like as the thing goes on. But I yeah. was, but it, but it, he still retains a lot of these kind he, of like he, epic wandering he, evil well, guy qualities with like principles yes, of his own or something like that. Yes, and the interesting thing is that he wants the money. If we're to take his word, which I think we are to build like a church to him, his yeah. weird sense of the church, you know, yeah. his idea of what it is. Yeah. And like that speaks to the, the point you're making or like that, that sort of like has his own principles. So it's like, you might say he has this human desire for the money, but it kind of isn't, it's this schizo schizo pill desire for the money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe I'm just wrong. Cause I didn't, I, I, yeah, I'm, I, I forgot that. I forgot that. So that's totally true. And I guess the comparison yeah, is a little, be the more, big difference. a little more, no, but it, but right. but this his, guy gets old, it, his end game is not just to build an altar to like glorify God. He wants to keep. He's just like in you know. He's just like Eli, and there will be blood. Where he he's trying to he's trying to build this empire to just swindle people. Like isn't he isn't he like a um, serial like widower? Like he just kills yeah, like yeah, women, women, then yeah. takes their money and like moves. But on. I think yeah. but I think but I think like unlike Eli, Eli is like. I think Dream. I think Eli like deep down like doesn't like actually like he knows like what he's doing is like wrong you know even if it's like denial about it whereas this guy he's like no I'm literally talking to God right now you know like I'm literally like God wants me to do this which is different yeah man's vanity may well approach the infinite in capacity <laughs> leaning Lean. 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Just to got a shotgun. For the viewers at home, John just brandished his phallus. And, and, and I have a candle. Uh, <gasps> Put that out. Wait, unironically, this film is kind of like this whole Kierkegaard grind of this guy. Kierkegaard like the, the grind. Although schizo film. Although schizo film, like this preacher, right? He spreads the good message of God, as he says in the beginning, which is death. And uh, all the stuff, and then like the the you know the very heavy-handed leaning, uh, lean on me versus lean on Jesus. 
Well, yeah. he doesn't say he doesn't say lean on me. He says lean on the everlasting says, arms, which is the actual words of the song, no. but is not as. No, he's got lines where he says, lean on me. Hold, hold on, I'm, I'm uh, pulling. Jake, it up. Jacob just pulled up the so He references himself at some. Point. <laughs> yeah, this, is the <laughs> <laughs> this is the only scripture you need. Uh, I'm pulling up it, but I'm pretty sure he references himself as some sort of authority. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he. Uh... This looks pretty schizo. I I like I like that <laughs> I like that she I don't know, I'm I I love I love the femme appreciation in this film. The uh, bon, bon, There's only one. There's only one. Okay. Femme. I'm saying that the boss bitch, uh, sigma sigma female sigma female. Uh, shot shot gun pilled. Yeah, um, doesn't she call feminist fools? Does she, she, call, she go, like those yeah, she foolish calls, feminists? Does she? Know, maybe, but she does say darn women are all fools. She says that twice at least. Yeah. No, she, there's like, they just want love. Look at her That's stare. Like, look at she, her like. Look at her. Look at her gaze. She, well, that was something like early on in the film. I was like, I was, I, I was, uh, I was, in doubt of the, uh, like. Like, I was scared, like, this movie was a little too old or something, like, with how, like, all the women were acting. Dude, dude, like, dude, yeah. For a second or two, and then I, and then I realized, like, oh, okay, like, everyone's, everyone's stupid, and, and then this lady comes along, and she's, like, obviously super base, and it's more about, like, uh, yeah, I mean, this was said earlier about how, like, everyone is corruptible and stupid, and that there's, like, there might be, like, a more feminine, a feminine like way of being corruptible and stupid and there's a more masculine way of being corruptible and stupid but either way like everyone's getting swindled by pal you know it's a very misanthropic movie yeah that was yep misanthropic just for the record so she says lean on jesus he says lean on me when you're not strong and i'll be your friend i'll help you carry on wait he says lean on me lean on me when you're not strong, as in like, right, right, right. As in like he's got that, he's got that lean on me. I got that. Yeah, lean on he's me. saying he's got lean he's on. Like, me. I keep that thing on me. It's like, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, my lean. favorite part of the movie is when he was like standing outside, and he's like, he's like, he's like, I keep that thing on me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's walking around. Yeah, like when he was, he was just stanced up with like a full cup of lean, and he's just like. <laughs> Yeah. He's tripped out. Yeah. And he's like and he's like stumbling into the yard saying, I'll be back tonight, shorty. Yeah. Yeah. Shoddy. I like that part of the movie too. And then he looks directly into the camera and said, Troy Eggerson. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to kill him. Did you guys like that part? Did you guys see that part where it referenced me by name? Dude, that is always scary. Wait, you guys didn't see that part? Wait. It, it said Troy Egerton six 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 six. And they recited my social and address. Then I had hemorrhoids. I'm I'm actually gonna dox Troy right now. So remember to remember to bleep this out. Wait, no, don't do it. I don't do it. Wait, he looks at the camera and says Troy Egerton, who lives at. You're fucking stupid. I have to now write it down. Write it down. Write it down. I got the time. You piece of shit. I've got the time, dude. The guy who's not editing it, he was like, "I'm gonna fuck this up. I'm gonna set a nuke off in this fucking recording." (laughs) There had to be. There had to be one thing. Ah, that's annoying. Anyway, well, you can you can you can make that the intro, like before the thing, and then you know. Troy, Troy Egerton. Bee! Yeah, I, I had I had a recording, I had an intro idea, but then now now that's exploded for this one, and the, the uh, intro oh. is gonna feature me for the first time. Wait, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, you can still do that. Yeah, you can still do, do, yeah. you can still do, do it. You can still do it. Jacob isn't even that funny. Come on. Yeah, fuck Jacob, dude. True. John, quit playing with your phallus. All right, are we wrapping it it's, up? It's, it's gonna, gonna, it's gonna get all. It's gonna get all. Yes. It's gonna get all rashy. You're gonna get rashy. I think. I think. I think a podcast that lasts as long as the film is a pretty is a pretty good one. The uh, although I think we t- probably talked about it for maybe seventy percent, sixty five percent. Perfect. So you know, we talk about right. the newest Veritasium videos. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I have my big announcement to make. Yeah, can All you right. make it? Oh yeah. Well, Whatever. cinematographically crew. Soon, I will be releasing. 
a scene by scene commentary. <laughs> I expect it to be at least twelve hours in length. And uh I'm I'm trying to choose the film. It'll be between uh The Sacrifice, Wings of Desire, and uh maybe some other one. <laughs> no, you know but this is coming I swear this is coming. We could we could just do a podcast yeah. on something other than a movie. We could just yeah, do I'm that. I'm also pro that. I'm also pro that, but I will be doing this. And we should, John, we should do a come town. I want to do episode. it alone. Just this first one. Okay. We should watch. We should do. But ironically, it would probably paradise. Be like, now that I have you all here, silence. Birds. See what I'm talking silence. about? Just complete silence. All right, all right we're, guys. We're, I'm logging off. <laughs> See look, you later. Look. I'm just shutting off. Jacob, my do you want? I'm not do logging, you want to talk about Jacob? Do you want to do it, Jacob? What? Talk about this. Uh, this quandary. Maybe you I should just want to be. You should talk. You should talk about the movie right now. Yeah, oh, second episode. God. Listen, listen, Jacob's, I just want to be able to Jacob's film votes, Jacob's film votes never get picked. It's true. It's true. And we're trying to figure out why John won't let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is so true. John. By the way, for the audience at home, hierarchically, John has the final say on what is <laughs> 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 Like we pretend to vote, but really John has to that, sign off. On that is so happens. true. Truly, jo- uh, Troy's chewing? special announcement about doing the six-hour thing. I'm actually yeah. making him do that. Like, yeah, the, <laughs> I'm actually reading a script been, yeah. right now. All of us are yeah, reading. Everyone a script, has John. teleprompters <laughs> in front of them, and I'm I'm typing out uh, four different scripts for everyone at the same time live. That's sick. Okay, listen, listen. Uh, that'd be awesome. Okay. That'd listen, be awesome. Enough beating around the bush. I think we should. I think we should watch Fruit of Paradise. It's got a little something for everyone. It's got hot girls. And Booba in it for what? Brody. Nice. Yeah. What? What? It's, <laughs> it's, it has it has it has bright colors and contrast in it for Steven. <laughs> okay. It has, it has visual stimulation for Steven. <laughs> visual stimulation for That's Steven. A John known thing, real. known sufferer sufferer of ADHD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so true. Uh, you know, it's got it's got some other shit for Troy. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, so true. And John's so just true. and John's just happy to. Happy to be here. <laughs> so I'm happy. John just, I'm just, just lucky. I'm just happy like this. you guys <laughs> let me. It's, it's I'm happy you, let, you, let, you guys let movie. me hang out with you. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I'm gonna make a big claim. So, Fruit of Paradise, it's like Antichrist, but better. Whoa, oh, that's my claim. You can't. Yeah. That's not possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trier, Trier ripped it off. All right, Trier ripped Dude, off. I have an you. announcement. I okay. have an announcement. An actual huge yeah, he announcement. Ripped off, Whoa. he ripped off genesis hold on steven has an announcement my insane announcement is <laughs> it's insane. this wednesday i will be benching a plate for five okay whoa let's go That's i weird. have already benched a plate for two and i think if i pushed i could have done three but it would have been a bad idea wait so you're telling me when you told me you were benching a plate it wasn't five sets of five it was two reps it was two reps <laughs> and you said get back to me when you bench a plate it took, it took me play. about three weeks, and coming this Wednesday, it'll be for five. Easy clap. Hell yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I'd bench a plate if I were a pussy instead of dumbbell pill. <laughs> awesome. Free weights. Okay. Uh, yeah, Steven didn't mention he's using a, he's on a Smith machine. I also didn't mention <laughs> that I'm fucking on gear. Yeah, Sub- <laughs> geared up. subscribe. Wait, can you hook me up? Subscribe to the Cinematographer Logically Speaking YouTube channel. We are at 915 subscribers. Oh, if yeah, we this can... goes out to the oh, to zero thoughts, people listening to this. Yeah, right now, yeah. Right? This goes out to the zero people listening to this. Subscribe. Yeah. We are at 915 subscribers. We are less than 100 subscribers away from becoming from making a million dollars off of this. All of the money is going back into the podcast and to giveaways. Uh, that we're gonna have. <laughs> we're gonna be doing free. We're gonna be doing Amazon twenty dollar Amazon gift card giveaways. We're giving away five hundred twenty dollar Amazon gift cards. Yeah, Wait, all you have to do all the money is going into renting out a theater and acquiring some like uh, 
uh, film print of some film to show t- for our audience. Yeah, all you have to do is yeah, we'll live stream it. We'll go live stream the film print. All you have to do is follow us. We're doing a live India. We're doing a live India. All you have to do is follow us on Twitter. You have to retweet. All the money is going to go towards uh, airfare to India, <laughs> yeah. so we can yeah, meet you all. Yeah, or you all have to follow us on Twitter. Retweet. Uh, um. Uh, retweet, your political yeah. retweet, retweet something. Retweet something. Elon Musk. And yeah, and you will be entered into our giveaway where we will be giving away um, all of Mr. our money. Beast. Yeah. yeah wait. Um, collaborating with all Mr. of our Beast. personal assets. All of our personal assets. I've got a, I've got a real question. Okay. Okay. Oh. This is for Troy. Troy, I don't even remember what movie we watched where Ch- Troy and I did a podcast. Yeah. Yes, John and I did a podcast on In the Mood for Love. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, we have the audio files. Uh, we just need to send them to Brian. Yeah, okay. okay I'll, I'll but I don't even it. know, dude. The podcast is pretty uh, poo-poo. <laughs> dude, that, dude, that reminds pretty me of the John because, one, dude. pretty poo-poo because Troy... When John and I did a solo. No, no, because your and John's was like funny. Ours was more like sad. <laughs> <laughs> um... But that film rocks, just for the audience. Yeah, that film's film. awesome. I think everybody would have liked so that one. So good. It's really yeah, fun for I think white that's audiences. A I think that I think the, I think the preacher in the <laughs> film should have should have had a lot of a lot more scenes where he was covering his eyes with his love and hate tattoos. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Isn't there like some Spike Lee scene movie where, where he's, he's using like, love as his masturbation hand? Isn't there like a Spike Lee movie where like there's like uh, some yes. dude and he's like. Love hate, love hate on his hands, like think, in I the nineteen eighty nine so. Spike Lee film "Do the Right yeah, Thing." Right, the yeah. character Radio Rahim wears brass <laughs> knuckles, saying "Love and Hate" on each hand, and gives a speech that is almost verbatim a copy of Powell's. Nothing. So this is exactly what we were talking days. about earlier about like nothing's original these days. About like uh, homages. Yeah, you can just rip a movie off. Everything and call is it an everything is derivative from uh, Greek. Mm, older the, than that. Um, I'm actually Beowulf. getting tired of people saying that everything is a reference to the Everything's Bible. a reference to Beowulf. Oh, that, it's, well, it's so tired. It, it's every, clearly, every, that, clearly it's everything is a, the text. That it's itself the, is a reference to the Bible. Troy, <laughs> it, it's, Troy you can't the, escape what's the, it. What's, what's the Sumerian text that has like, that where it's like the older one? The first Gilgamesh, story? Gilgamesh. Uh, Gilgamesh. The yeah, Book of yeah. the Law. Everything first, is a reference the first to novel. That. Yeah, everything. The first, the first, the first, everything's the a reference first, to Hammurabi's code. All, the, first all novel, the first novella, all the of first culture. Novella. Everything's a reference to cave paintings. All of culture is just downstream. The from infinite the, jest. The, 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 the chi- downstream of the <laughs> Nile. No, the chip that the fucking government implanted in my head, and is that is all being telecommunicated to the Hollywood elites, and is now everything is a derivative from that. So you're saying that um. The Beowulf, the Beowulf CGI film is actually a rip-off of my own inner thoughts. That's exactly Beowulf right. CGI well, it's actually, my, it's actually my inner thoughts. Have you not seen that? I did see that. Wait. Beowulf film, yeah. The Beowulf film is like... It's kind of With fun. Angelina Jolie? Really it's that. pretty fun, but it's pretty bad. Listen. It was it was crazy at the time because it was like the whole movie is CGI. Yeah. Okay. But like I think... real? <laughs> augmented. Is it time to sign off? I want I want everyone to commit right here, right here. <laughs> next time. Next time, Fruit of Paradise. Let's talk about this off air. No, no, no. It has to be on the it's all good. Bird, 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 I'm, I'm tired. Let's, do this, I'm let's tired. do this behind closed doors, shall we? I'm tired of being ignored. Come to the cellar. Come to the cellar. Of, I will. I will. I will. I will. Okay? I will grant you. I will sign a contract. That I I'm will tired of the, suggesting I, I will, movies and then having no one respond. I will sign because a, I didn't write some fucking the, Bergman tree. The, con, the contract of, of me saying that I will watch Fruit of Paradise is underneath this piece of concrete. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we did we did do <laughs> Night of the Hunter, concrete. which is like this American fucking film. At least it's, it wasn't you know it wasn't Bergman. It None wasn't of us have seen it. You know, no one had seen it. It was. Yeah, it was, I'm saying let's do that again because it was because it was fun. Well, yeah, but this time let's do Fruit of Paradise. Wait, so you're saying this isn't a Bergman podcast? Podcast is Bergman, but okay, the film wasn't. We're gonna sign off.
Nobody, see, I just said it, and everyone just... Well, because no one wants it. Look, I'm down, I'm down for... I'm about to walk away from I want to support you. I'm I'm totally down for... Then say something. You're just... Everyone just was staring at their monitor after I say this. Listen, I'm serious about this. Listen, I'm... If we don't watch Fruit of Paradise, I'm going to fucking kill myself! Look, I'm so down. I'm so down to watch Fruit of Paradise. I'll agree to watch Fruit of Paradise and do a podcast I'm so down. But I'm not agreeing to next weekend. It's gonna be Jacob. Right. We should, we should with, start a I'm second podcast called Jacob's I, Picks. I will. I will I, I'm on board with Troy. What Troy just said. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm that. down to watch Fruit of Paradise and do a podcast and, on it. And really. I'm just not agreeing to do it next week. Yeah, I'm. I'm which, also which next doesn't weekend, mean we won't do. When next I say week, next week, this is a this is weekly, right? I'm saying next week. Yeah, yeah. You want to? I'm. I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not saying it doesn't deserve to be weekly. But I'm not committing to it being a weekly. But I am committing to watching it and doing a podcast on it in the relative near-term future. I think that's fair. Um, Next week is Pain and Gain. It's already scheduled. Okay, okay let's do some closing thoughts. Who's well, on the dock oh, first? We do closing thoughts. Right. Troy's, Troy's, <laughs> Troy's first on closing thoughts. Closing thoughts. This film... <laughs> rules asterisk very good i like the story the performances are good surprisingly good for the time what the and uh does that mean they didn't know how to act they didn't know how to act <laughs> until the 80s until um the 80s. until Willem no Dafoe i like i like this movie a lot i'm very happy for having watched it did it excite me no did it was it interesting no Whoa. did i <laughs> feel did i feel that the film was an infinitely compressed encrypted version of my own consciousness? No. Did I like the movie? Yes. Final score? 3.3. All right. Brody, you better write that down. Brody's writing it down. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, this movie... um, This movie actually was an infinitely compressed version of my... (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. This movie... um, yeah, I thought it. I thought it was dope. I loved the. Uh, I loved the the vibe of like the like I don't know just this all the like spooky quiet parts you know like all the all of the slow burn uh, black and white. Uh, no, I no in general I no I in general I just liked the movie. I thought it was great. I thought the I found it eerie and and um, fun and. Yeah, I think the parts that were kind of felt dated and whatnot, I don't know, I, I like feel bad for even like mentioning it in my final thoughts. But either way, like I didn't I wasn't necessarily like off put that by them. I kinda like as Jacob said, like I found them more like endearing or like a poss- potentially like a conscious quality of the film as like this kind of a uh, tale which I thought made it uh even more enjoyable. Um, yeah, in general, I liked it. I like this sort of movie. Um, we're going to give it, we're going to give it a, we're going to give it a three, we're going to give it a three, three point three. Holy smokes, the same score. Oh, is it actually the same score? Yes. Oh, I don't even know. I didn't even know. Can't change it. You are susceptible. Yeah, you're locked in. Oops. I didn't even. Okay. I literally. I thought. I. I forgot what Troy said. I. I assumed that it was a lot lower than that. You are not immune to no Troy. No one begin. listens to me. Troy no one listens to you. <laughs> Troy Paganda. Troy Uganda. Tropicana. Uh, I have a few things Troy to say. Uganda. One, I've really got to pee. Two, this film was like a Call of Duty campaign. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, three, the, mo- the movie was really good uh has extreme political implications <laughs> uh overall an extremist film i would give this movie yes it was it was definitely an extremist film radical i give this film 3.7 as a i thought you were gonna say 3.3 as, <laughs> as, as a radical leftist <laughs> i think that we need more propagandistic films like this to accelerate um, to accelerate the process uh no <laughs> so the um it was cute it was a little i treated it as like a fable as a little um 
not a movie that I love, but a movie that is uh, now a part of film history. Um, I'm now glad that I'm going to know all the homages uh, to this. Um, I'm probably not going to even remember it much or even think about it that much after the fact. Um, but I'm still glad that I watched it um, just as like a... Yeah, just as like you like reading like an important piece of like literature or something like this that you thought was pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a probably like a 3.0. What did, what did you give it, Stephen? 3.4? 3.7. 3.7. And just, you know, when, when Brody was saying stuff about like an old piece of literature that is mostly just historically Portman and overall pretty good. He was holding up the Bible yeah. on camera. Yeah, I was. He was well, with, a, with, a light, with, a, with a lighter on, on top of yeah. it to show that I really think it's... He was holding up the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, <laughs> 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 so the, the recent Jake. bill that was passed in Congress, the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, this movie... Just like this gathering of people, it was a struggle between love and between hate. Brother love and brother hate. And at some points, brother hate, he was winning out. He was winning the fight in this movie. He thought that pal, he was going to strike down the kids and take the money. But ultimately, brother love with that old woman and that orphanage, it won out the day. And Mr. Pal, he saw the inside of a jail cell. Maybe he even saw... The inner workings of a rope. The inner workings uh, of a rope. When you go to a rope factory. I thought. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> you watched the How It's I Made. This, uh, yeah. See, so yeah, I, you know, generally the same. <laughs> Modern marvels. Years, I thought it was charming. Charming, fun. Probably like a 3.5. 3.5. Let's fucking go. This I won. Makes, Wait, yeah, this Brody, makes. Brody, what score? This, this my like, score? I'm gonna yeah, three point zero. So this makes uh, sorry, Steven. sorry. So this makes Stephen the winner of this episode. He officially understood it the best. Uh, I therefore, did. therefore, he liked it the best. Uh, I am officially be... the loser. I like many of these as a deep cynic, and as an idiot who doesn't understand films. But this is your movie. This is a misanthropic movie. So true. What were you gonna say, John? I was gonna say we're gonna be <laughs> mailing uh, Stephen a prize. Um, Bomb. Hold <laughs> on, <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, but it's like a golden we're gonna be, bomb. We're going to be mailing you like... a small hamster um, bomb. bomb. <laughs> small explosive, <laughs> small explosive uh, <laughs> uh, furry friend. Yeah. Well, the, the, the U.S., they're not allowed to check your mail. So, right. <laughs> so we can send bombs to each other. Right. Uh, <laughs> Wait, has uh, anybody yeah, heard of to all the listeners, if you use the U.S. Postal Service, <laughs> you could get away with it. Don't do it, you though. Will. That's a horrible thing. Do not do it. This uh, podcast you is You will get away with it, and you will not record. do it. <laughs> yeah, for the Cin- record. Cin- just like Harvey Weinstein, speaking, we do not, not support... Condone, uh, Bombing Mailing people bombs. through the mail. We, you, can, you can also, we, you can also, le- anyone can legally just we, send a package. We to do, the White House. <laughs> <laughs> we do, however, refuse to comment on that of the action of uh, political assassinations. Are we have no official? Wait, no, stance. we don't refuse to comment. We have no official. We're stance. against it. Yeah, we we. We're yeah, against, I'm officially against it. For the record, just for the record, Stephen Dinko is officially against. Yeah, all for the record, I'm killings. for the record, I'm holding my tongue. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> The record, my, the my record, fingers I can't are speak crossed behind this. my back. <laughs> okay. Good pod. Shit All right. pod. All right. Well, audience, I guess we'll see you later. See you okay. later. Thanks for... Bye. 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 Sometimes it just takes a little bit of a break. Yeah, you know, you come back, you hit the skate, you get on the skateboard, you get the kickflip first try. You know, yeah, Dude, that's actually how I landed my first kickflip. Was by I tried for so long, I stopped skating for four years, stood on my buddy's board and tried to kickflip and landed it, and it was so depressing. 
Wait, that's no, that's awesome. It was awesome, that's how but it that's how progress. I know, works. but I don't. I didn't even skate. You know, that's how, that's how it worked for me as well with skating. Is like I sucked, and then I didn't skate for like five years, and then all of a sudden I like, like, little coordination. Maybe? That's how sex works for me. Yeah. Oh shit, John. 